Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I work as a lecturer of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is major histocompatibility complex molecules or MHC molecules part 1. This is the fifth lecture of our ongoing immunology lecture series. In this video, we will learn about the introduction and definition of MHC molecules. We will also talk briefly about MHC genes, the structures of class 1 and class 2 MHC molecules, and we will also compare between class 1 and class 2 MHC molecules. And towards the end of today's video, we will also talk briefly regarding MHC restriction. Then, in the next video on MHC molecules, we will finish our discussion by talking about the pathways of antigen processing and presentation by MHC molecules. And we will also talk about the importance of MHC molecules in that video as well. Okay, a lot of topics, so let's begin. So let's start our lecture by talking about some introductory points regarding major histocompatibility complex molecules. Now always remember both B cells and T cells can use surface molecules to recognize antigens. However, they accomplish this task in very different ways. For example, B cell receptors, which are in fact antibodies located on the surface of B cells, can recognize an antigen alone. However, T cell receptors that are also located on the surface of T cells cannot recognize an antigen alone. In order to recognize an antigen, T cell receptors require help from other molecules. Always remember, T cell receptors can only recognize peptide fragments of protein antigens when those peptide fragments are positioned on the surface of other cells. The peptide fragments are held within the binding groove of a specialized cell surface protein and that specialized cell surface protein that is holding the peptide fragments in order to present those peptide fragments to the T cell receptors are called major histocompatibility complex molecule. For example, in this image we can see how a T lymphocyte or T cell is recognizing antigen. So we can see that on the surface of this T lymphocyte, there is the T cell receptor that is written as TCR. We can also see that on the surface of this T cell, there is also CD8 co-receptor. So we can say that this is a CD8 positive T lymphocyte. Now, on the right side of this T lymphocyte, we can see an antigen presenting cell. Now, whenever we hear the term antigen presenting cells, the examiners are very fond of asking what are the antigen presenting cells. So, always remember dendritic cells, macrophages, and B lymphocytes are antigen presenting cells. So, what is happening here? An antigen presenting cell. For example, say a dendritic cell is trying to present an antigen to the T lymphocyte. And how is that thing achieved? Antigen presenting cells are using specialized cell surface molecule that will present the peptide fragments of protein antigen to the T cell receptor. You can see that I have drawn the peptide fragment in green color. And this peptide fragment is positioned on the groove of a specialized cell surface molecule that is located on the surface of antigen-presenting cell. 
and this specialized cell surface molecule that is providing the groove where the peptide will be positioned so that the peptide could be presented to the T cell receptor, that specialized cell surface molecule is known as major histocompatibility complex molecule. Now, in the next lecture, we will also see that this particular MHC molecule is in fact class 1 MHC molecules because always remember class 1 MHC molecules tend to present peptide fragments of protein antigen to CDH positive T cell. If the MHC molecule was class 2 then we would have seen that that is presenting the peptide fragments not to CD8 but to CD4 positive T cells. So we can see that major histocompatibility complex molecules display peptide fragments from protein antigens to T cell receptor so that it can be recognized by antigen specific T lymphocytes. They were discovered as gene products that induced rejection of transplanted organs. Their name is derived from their role in determining the compatibility of tissue between individuals. Recall that in pathology, histo stands for tissue. So here, since those molecules can determine compatibility of tissue between individuals, so they are called histocompatibility complex molecules. In human, the major histocompatibility complex molecules are also known as human leukocyte antigens and we will use these two terms interchangeably throughout this lecture. So always remember in humans, MHC molecules are also called human leukocyte antigen. And why? Because they were first detected on leukocytes by binding with antibodies. Major histocompatibility complex molecules are fundamental to antigen recognition by T cells. Success of tissue and organ transplant also depends on the compatibility of MHC molecules of the donor and recipient. And as we will see, these molecules are also linked to many autoimmune diseases. Now the last bullet point is also very interesting. In 1980, the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology was awarded to immunologist Benacerov, Dossett and George Davis Snell for their remarkable role in characterizing the functions that are controlled by these MHC molecules, particularly regarding organ transplant fate and immune response to antigen. So now that we have talked about some introductory points regarding MHC molecules, now we are ready to define MHC molecules. So. Major histocompatibility complex molecules are membrane glycoproteins that display peptide fragments of protein antigens for recognition by antigen specific T lymphocytes. We can also define them as membrane glycoproteins that act as a cell surface vessel for holding and displaying fragments of antigen so that approaching T cells can engage this molecule complex via their T cell receptors. So now that we have talked about the definition of MHC molecules, now let's move on and talk about MHC genes. In human, the genes that encode MHC molecules are clustered on short arm of chromosome 6 and there they occupy a large segment of the DNA that is extending about 3500 kilobases. 
there are three class 1 MHC genes they are called HLA a B and C and they encode the three types of class 1 MHC molecules with the same name there are three class 2 MHC gene loci they are called HLA DP DQ and DR and as we will see later when we are talking about the structure of MHC molecules each class 2 MHC molecule is composed of a heterodimer of alpha and beta polypeptides and the DP, DQ, DR loci on each chromosome contain separate genes designated A and B that encode the alpha and beta chains respectively. Now every individual has two haplotypes or two sets of these genes. One set of gene is located on the paternal chromosome 6 and the other set of genes is located on maternal chromosome 6. Now between the class 1 and class 2 gene loci there is a third locus that is sometimes called class 3. Now class 3 gene locus encodes tumor necrosis factor, lymphotoxin, complement 2, complement 4. However, it doesn't encode histocompatibility antigens. So now that we have talked about MHC genes, now let's move on and talk about the structures of class 1 and class 2 MHC molecules. So first we will talk about some general properties and then we will talk about the individual structures of class 1 and class 2 MHC molecules. There are two main classes and they are class 1 and class 2 MHC molecules. So first let's talk about the general properties. Each MHC molecules will contain an extracellular peptide binding cleft followed by an immunoglobulin-like domain and transmembrane and cytoplasmic domains. The polymorphic amino acid residues of MHC molecules are located in and adjacent to the peptide binding cleft. The non-polymorphic immunoglobulin-like domains of class 1 and class 2 molecules contain binding sites for T-cell molecules CD8 and CD4 respectively. So let's talk about the structure of class 1 MHC molecules now. The first bullet point is very important. You need to know this. They are expressed on all nucleated cells and also on platelets. They are heterodimers. They contain a polymorphic alpha chain or heavy chain linked non-covalently to a smaller non-polymorphic beta 2 microglobulin. Now always remember although the alpha chain of class 1 MHC molecule is encoded from the MHC gene, the beta 2 microglobulin is encoded by a different gene that is in fact located on chromosome 15. Alpha chains are encoded by HLA A, HLA B and HLA C genes and we have already mentioned that the beta 2 microglobulins are encoded by genes located on chromosome 15. Now the extracellular region of alpha chain is again divided into alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 domains alpha 1 and alpha 2 domains form a cleft or groove where peptides can bind. Now the sides and the base of the peptide binding grooves are formed by polymorphic amino acid residues. Always remember class 1 MHC molecules can display peptides that are derived from viral proteins and tumor antigens and they are located in the cytoplasm of the cells and 
this type of antigens are usually produced inside the cells. The fully assembled class 1 molecule is a trimeric complex and it will contain an alpha chain, a beta 2 microglobulin and a bound peptide. Stable expression of class 1 MHC molecules on cell surfaces requires the presence of all these three components of the complex. Now always remember class 1 MHC associated peptides are recognized by CD8 positive T cells. Why? Because the non-polymorphic alpha 3 domain of class 1 MHC molecules contain a binding site for CD8. So here we can see a simplified diagrammatic image of class 1 MHC molecule we can see that it is composed of an alpha chain that I have drawn in blue color and also beta 2 microglobulin. The extracellular region of the alpha chain is again divided into three domains. They are alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 domain. We can also see that alpha 1 and alpha 2 domain formed a cleft or groove for the peptide that will be presented to the T-cell receptor. So this is the peptide binding groove or peptide binding cleft. Always remember the walls and base of this peptide binding groove is made up of polymorphic amino acid residues and that's why we will see so much variation in the peptide binding groove among different individuals. Now always remember the alpha 3 domain is non-polymorphic but it's still important because it contains CD8 binding site. So this is the site where the CD8 co-receptor of the T lymphocyte will bind during antigen presentation by the MHC molecule. And if we go back to our first image that I had showed you a few moments ago, you can see that I have actually drawn the same structure here. So here you can also see the alpha 1, alpha 2 and uh, alpha 3 domain and if you look carefully I have also drawn CD8 that is binding with the alpha 3 domain. So now that we have talked about class 1 MHC molecules, now let's move on and talk about class 2 MHC molecules. They are expressed on the surface of professional antigen presenting cells like dendritic cells, macrophages and B cells. Always remember class 2 MHC molecules present antigens that are internalized into vesicles and are usually derived from extracellular microbes and soluble proteins. They are encoded in HLA-D region that has three subregions and we have already mentioned their names. They are HLA-DP, DQ and DR. They are heterodimers and they contain a non-covalently associated polymorphic alpha chain and beta chain. The extracellular portion of alpha and beta chains both have two domains that are called alpha 1, alpha 2 and beta 1, beta 2 respectively. Peptide binding groove is formed by alpha 1 and beta 1 most class 2 alleles differ in this portion. So here we can see a simple diagrammatic image of class 2 MHC molecule. Note that it is composed of an alpha and a beta chain and both are encoded from the MHC genes that are located on the MHC gene loci of chromosome 6. Now always remember the extracellular region of alpha chain is divided into alpha 1 
and alpha-2 domains. Similarly, the extracellular region of beta chain is again divided into beta-1 and beta-2. The peptide binding groove is formed by alpha-1 and beta-1 domains. Now always remember both alpha-2 and beta-2 domains will be involved in binding with CD4 co-receptor. So always remember that both alpha-2 and beta-2 provides a concavity that will provide attachment to the convexity or protrusion on the CD4 co-receptor. In short, both alpha-2 and beta-2 will be involved in CD4 co-receptor binding. And that's why class 2 MHC molecules will only present peptide fragments of protein antigens to CD4 positive T lymphocytes. So now that we have talked about class 1 and class 2 MHC molecules, in this slide we will compare them. So regarding the features of polypeptide chains, we can see that in class 1 MHC, the polypeptide chains are alpha and beta 2 microglobulin and in case of class 2 MHC, the polypeptide chains are alpha and beta. Regarding the location of polymorphic residues in class 1 MHC molecules, they are located in alpha 1 and alpha 2 domains and in case of class 2 MHC, they are located in alpha 1 and beta 1 domains. Regarding the size of peptide binding groove, class 1 MHC peptide binding groove can accommodate peptides of 8 to 11 residues and class 2 MHC peptide binding groove can accommodate peptides of about 10 to 30 residues or more. Regarding binding site for T-cell co-receptor, we can see that class 1 MHC has binding site where CD8 can bind and that is located mainly in the alpha-3 domain. And in case of class 2 MHC, we can see that uh, CD4 co-receptor of T-cell can bind with class 2 MHC and CD4 can bind to a pocket that is created by parts of alpha-2 and beta-2. So now that we have talked about the structure of class 1 and class 2 MHC molecules, now let's move on and talk about a very important topic and that is MHC restriction. Often the examiner may ask you, what do you mean by MHC restriction? Now, we have seen that T cells' ability to recognize antigens depends on association of antigens with self-MHC molecules. For example, cytotoxic T cells can recognize antigens only in association with self-class 1 MHC molecules. Similarly, helper T cells can recognize antigen in association with self class 2 MHC molecules. The requirement to recognize antigen in association with a self MHC protein is called MHC restriction. So this concludes our first video on MHC molecules. In the second video on MHC molecules that I will hopefully upload within a week. We will finish our discussion by talking about the pathways of antigen processing and presentation by MHC molecules and also by talking about the importance of these molecules. I hope this video was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take
Take care and stay blessed. Thank you.